Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to learn how to play the one to four player game, The Walking Dead Surrounded. And this is going to be published by Button Shy Games. And in this game, you're going to be trying to strategically place down your locations or your occupants in order to score the most points at the end of the game and survive all the walkers coming in and trying to eat your survivors. Let's go ahead down to the table here. I'm going to show you how to play The Walking Dead Surrounded. All right, so this is Walking Dead, surrounded by Button Shy Games. Night falls, the remnant of humanity scavenged for necessities amid the abandoned landscape of their former lives. Their eyes always watchful for shambling hordes that will, are never far away. In the pockets where people still survive, hard choices must be made. Where to go, what to do, and who to trust. In this game, you're going to be trying to score the most points. This game can be played between one to four players, and you're trying to score those points by how you place your cards around these different locations to gain points or to lose points. So at the start of the game, you're going to shuffle these 18 cards here, and you're going to do it with a location side up, which is this side, not this side, but this side up. And to start the game, you're going to place one, the top location, out. And then you're going to flip the next card over and you're going to place it uh, on one of the sides of this location. Now, the placement rule for this is it has to have a walker um, adjacent to the location you just placed. If that's not possible, you can place it anywhere you want around the location. But in this case, we're going to have to place this walker here. And all the cards have to be upright. You can't rotate them in any way. So that's how this first location would go out. Now, a couple things of note on here is that this location has a special ability, which is down here. Walkers are doubled. Each count icon counts as two. So right now there's going to be two walkers out on that location. But at the end of the game, if we can have some survivors at this location here, we're going to get additional two points. To have survivors out of a location, you have to have more survivors adjacent to this location than there are walkers. If you have less, then you're overrun. All right, so that was set up. Well, what else is there? Well, let's go over the map a little bit and how that has to be laid out. Well, the map has to be laid out where every card can be reached from any other card, and that has to be horizontally or vertically. So that means if I place this location here, it's going to have to go against an occupant. It can't touch a card of the same type. So occupants can't be adjacent to occupants and locations can't be adjacent to a location. So if I set a location, I can set them anywhere here. And if I set it here, we'll go over abilities in a minute. I can't actually use this move ability to move the card anywhere else because this card here would no longer be in uh, reachable. So you always have to keep everything reachable in there and you have to always keep the uh, integrity of your map in the game. But that's the general rule that you're going to have for map building in the game where again locations can't go next to locations and occupants which are these cards can't go adjacent to occupants. Alright so the gameplay in this game is players are going to take turns clockwise as the active player take the deck and decide to explore or occupy. You must decide before removing the top card. Do not look at its occupant side or anything else. So this game can be played one to four players. This rule doesn't change whether you're playing one or multiple players. If you're playing one player, you're just going to take each turn, uh, turn after turn. If you're playing multiple players, you're going to go clockwise. So one of the actions here is going to be occupy because this is going to be a good occupy card. When you do occupy, you're going to flip this card over and you're going to have to place this card adjacent to the location. Now, when you're placing out and you're doing the explore action and placing out a location, you have to place the walker immediately afterwards adjacent to that location. But that's not the case if you're doing the occupy action. Instead, you can place it anywhere you want that's valid to a location that's out. In this case, we only have one. And in this case, what we're probably going to do is we're going to probably place this over here uh, so we can keep this double walker far, far away. 
And as of right now, there's two walkers to one survivor. So this location still overruns. So that's something to keep in mind. Additionally, for scoring, you want to try to surround locations. So that means you'll have a card on every side of the location. You can get additional stuff for that. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so that was the Occupy action. The other thing you can do is you could do a, uh, um, you could do the Explore action. For the Explore action, you're gonna take the card here. Oops, sorry. Now you're gonna take the location here. Now you never look at the Occupy side, but you take a location and you can place it out. And right now this location's looking really good. So this location card is gonna give me an additional person. Uh, so that's really cool. And if I place this here, I'm going to have three people. Now, if I place it over here, I would have a leader also. Now, the, what's the advantage of the leader? So the leader has this star up here. And what the advantage of that leader here is if they survive by the end of the game, they're going to give me a bonus point for every survivor. They're going to get a point for themselves, but they're going to give me a bonus point for every survivor at that location, which is really cool. One thing to watch out for leaders, though, is if I have more than one leader at a location, they actually kill each other. So I'm going to go ahead and play it safe here. I'm going to place it over here. Even though there's not a leader yet, I, right, right now I technically have three survivors. So that, once you do the explore, where you put the location out, now you actually have to put an occupant out. And now we have to follow the rule here where we have to put a walker adjacent to the location. So right now this has to go here. All right, whoops, this card's backwards. Make sure you don't do that when you're setting up. Okay, so there's a couple extra rules that are in this game. Um, if the, you run into the last card, so the last card of the deck has to be an Occupy. Doesn't matter what it is, it has to, you have to Occupy with it, which we'll go over in a second. But there's an additional rule. You're gonna sign, find some locations that have this walker on there. Well, what does that mean? So if a location has this walker on it, you're going to have to immediately place it out as an explore action. You have no choice. So you're going to want to watch out for those. And that's going to have the, like, the, all the walkers have this little red X on it. The other thing you're going to notice is you're going to have these little items that are available. And they only become available if you actually surround the location. That will be, become more important when you do scenarios, but they're still worth a point if you do surround locations. So that is cool. We're going to go over... Uh, the different scenarios here in a minute, but those are the two different actions you can have in the two different special cases. So again, if you get to the last card, you're going to have to occupy with it. Uh, and if you get any cards with the walker here, you got to place out location. If you can't place out locations or you can't place out occupy, you have to do the opposite. So if I can't place out an occupy, I have to uh, have to do an explore. If I can't place out a, uh, if I can't place out a location I'm going to have to occupy uh, if I can't do either the game immediately ends all the cards that I couldn't place go away and I have to do scoring so not being able to place is really bad in this game so make sure that you're always able to at least place an occupy or a location uh, so you don't lose the game so there's going to be abilities in this game. So as we go by, I'm going to show you some ability here in a second here. We're going to actually do a explore action because this is a pretty nice location uh, that says if placed adjacent to a walker, do not spawn more walkers. So I could technically place this here and not spawn a walker, which can be really cool. Or I could place it up here and do an action. So if I placed it here, I wouldn't spawn a walker and I could have a burn action. So we're going to do, pretend we're going to do either placement here. So what the burn, so you have a, several different actions here that we can go over, but we're going to go ahead and go, oh, it's three different actions. There's going to be a move, a look, and a burn. So this burn right here, if I place one adjacent to it, or if I place this card adjacent to a location, so it became adjacent here, I could do the burn action. Return any card from the map to the top or bottom of the deck location side up. So I could say, well, maybe I don't like this worker, so I'm gonna do this burn action. So I could take this card and I could put this on the bottom or top of the deck. Let's say I don't wanna reoccupy with this. Uh, maybe I do. I'll put it at the bottom of the deck. Now, instead, if I have went, if I would have went uh, over here, I could do a move action. And for the move action, I, I can move any card, occupant card I want. And when you're moving an occupant part, it has to be moved adjacent to the location it's at. So some examples of things I can't do, I can't move this card here 
um, because the now I've bra broken my map. I, I don't have anything that I can reach to this card. So I can't move that. But if I, I could move this card and I can move it to do something like this here. So now I don't have two walkers hanging out near that. Uh, but that's not very useful. The other thing I could do is I can move this up and have more people here. Uh, but instead, I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the burn action where I burn this card, put it on the bottom. Now, there's another action in here uh, that's called look. So it'll just say look underneath it. Now, look is uh, super useful because you can peek at both sides of either the top or bottom card of the deck. Uh, then return it turn the card afterward to the same location. So that can really help out for you to see what's happening. So those are three different actions that you can have in the game. And they're all useful. And those will occur anytime that your placement uh, becomes adjacent to something with an action. Now, if I move a card and let's say I move this card for one reason or another, I move it here. Uh, I can't do that action again. I'm not going to be able to chain them. It's just when you place them out on the map, not when you do an action to do something. And those are collectively known as abilities. So that's the gameplay itself. Well, now we need to get into the scoring. But before we do that, we're going to do a couple rounds of the game here. So we're going to be at this state right here. I have to place this one out. And it says negative two points if this location's overrun. And again, a location becomes overrun when you have more walkers than survivors of the location. And this one already has one. And I'm going to have to place this one out. And I'm going to have to place this card adjacent so that I have a walker adjacent to it. But guess what? I don't have to because this is already taken and I have no legal spot to place this for adjacent for walkers. I don't need to anymore. So instead, I could place this anywhere I want along this card. And I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get this card a leader even and uh, maybe uh, push forward with this. I could move it here and then get the move action, but I don't think there's anything really I want to move right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next, we have this location. So this location is pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and set this one out here. And then I'm going to have to do an explore. Ooh, that one's not very nice. I'm going to do it this way because I don't want to have two walkers at this location because they're doubled there. Uh, so that would go there. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the top of the deck here. We could go to this location if we wanted to. Uh, any humans on the edge of this become a walker. And it gives me a human, though. So that uh, is pretty darn cool. Hmm. Do I want to place out this location or do I want to do the occupant side? Well, right now I have four, five locations out. And I want to try, you know, I'm going to try the occupant side. Oh my gosh, that was a horrible, horrible mistake. Um, hmm. I need to get this out of here. This is a bad one. Uh, okay, so I guess the least worst location to... Oh my gosh, that is so bad. If I place it here, uh, then these two walkers will kill these two people and I won't get any points. If I place it here, then I'm going to place a walker here and a walker here. And this place would already have two walkers, and this would mean there are four because they're doubled. Uh, so that was a horrible idea. I need to figure out where I could place this that's easier to move it around. So if I move this, I can move it. It's still bad. Oh, you know what? I could place it here. That works. Uh, if placed adjacent to a walker, do not spawn. Okay, so yeah. So that's fine. All right, so now I have a peaceful location. I can plop that out. That would be a pretty good one. I'm going to put this one... I'll put this one here. And then that's cool, because now I get to flip this one over, and I can I don't have to worry about this guy. So flip this over. I'm going to have to place a walker. Oh, this is a really good location. I can do a burn and a move if I have it here, and I place a location again. Um, yeah, it's going to go here. All right. So now I have this. I have tons of locations out. I don't know if I want another location. I need more occupants. So I'm going to place out an occupant here. This occupant would not want to go here because the leaders kill each other. Might not be too bad here. And would be pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and place it there. 
I'm going to keep going with occupants for a little bit here, see if I can get some of these areas around it. So I flipped over this card. Um, problem is I have everything on the bottom edge here, but this one already has a leader. I could place this one here, which is cool. Gives the site an occupant in the site, or in the site a survivor, site a leader. So now that this site has a leader and two people, this site has a person and a leader, so the, or two people, so that's good too. Uh, I'm going to keep on with the occupants for a little bit. Well, look at the top card here. Yeah, keep on with the occupants for a little bit. Uh, this one was going to probably do well. We're going to place this one here. I'm going to keep on with the occupants for more. Get some more occupants out. Mm. I sort of wish I want to have something over there to get that area surrounded and finished off. Oh, these are so bad. Uh, my gosh. I'm going to place... This one here, I'm gonna throw. Ooh, this location has a person. I'm gonna go ahead and do this because now I can do a burn and a move action, which is really cool. So the move action I'm gonna do is I, well, I can't move him. I'm going to go ahead. Do I want to give up this location? Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and move. Maybe it's not as good as I thought it was. Um. No, I can move this guy up here. And is there a card that I want to burn that I can legally burn here? Uh, this card's pretty bad too, though. I can legally burn. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I could burn this card. Okay. So now I have two cards left here. And I... I put the burn card on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and occupy because uh, I don't like this card at all. And I, yeah, so that turned out a little better. Now I can actually have this area surrounded, which is pretty cool. And I have the last location, so I have to occupy with it. And I will place that here. Okay, so now I have my map completed. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see the far side of this map. And we're going to do scoring. All right, so scoring for this game. You're going to score one point for each survivor, one point for each leader, plus survivor at the location, and negative one point for each walker. Now, you'll also, if you have an area surrounded well and not overrun, you will also gain a point for that, too. And some locations will give you points, uh, so if surrounded in general. So we're going to go over that in a second here. If we look at this location here, how many points would we get? Well, right here we have a leader and we have three survivors. So we would get one point for the leader, one point for each of the survivors. So that's four points. But we also get a point for each survivor at the location with the leader. So right here we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'd have seven points just at that location. Uh, if we look at a bad location, like here we have two walkers and one leader. The two walkers overrun the leader. We're leaving one locker, walker, so we have negative one points. Any location we have surrounded, like we have this location surrounded and we survived, uh, we would uh, gain a point. If we would have surrounded this location, we would gain plus two points, so that's pretty cool. So this location here, this walker kills this person, but then we have one, two, three, and then the leader gets a bonus point for each survivor, four or five points. So you're going to score up all those. That's how you're going to do your points. And at the back of the book here, it's going to tell you how well you did. So if you scored 0 through 10, this is your rank, 11 through 15, 16 through 20, or uh, 21. You're trying to uh, get into 16 or above for your points. And that's how you're going to play uh, walking Dead Surrounded. There's also a scenario book. So what does the scenario book do? do? Uh, it's basically you're going to be playing through the regular game here, but you're going to be able to select difficulty. You're going to find the location that matches this number right here, and that's going to be your starting location for the game. And you're going to have an objective whether you pick standard, hard, or expert. So if I pick standard, I need to surround two locations that have a gas can containers. Hard, surround two location two gas can locations and those locations must be not be overrun. Uh, expert surround two gas can locations and each of these locations must have at least 
one remaining leader and at least one remaining survivor. So you can increase the difficulty here for each of these scenarios. And in the, ga in the base game here, you're going to get 18 scenarios that you can run because there's 18 cards. That's basically it for the scenario deck. Basically what this is, is going to add a layer of difficulty to the game because not only do you have to complete the game for the points normally, but you also need to meet scenario objectives and adds a lot of replayability to the game itself. So, so that's what comes in and how you play uh, The Walking Dead Surrounded. Thank you for watching.